Welcome back. Um, in this video, what we're going to do is um, focus on steps number three and four of the creative problem solving. So what we're going to do here is um, take a look at um, what we need to do to effectively um, work on idea generation and also the optimal solution creation. So uh, selection, I'm sorry, selection. So, so that, that's our goal. Our goal is to work on these step three and four. Earlier videos did an overview of all five steps and we worked on step one and two. Now we're in step three and four, which means we have already know what our customer needs or problems or whatever we need to solve has already been defined. We have a problem definition. Our problem definition has the four components, has a clear statement of problem, not the solution, uh, and then has a scope, how far we're gonna go into solving this problem, and then resources, you know, what resources in terms of staffing, in terms of facilities, in terms of materials, and anything else we need to complete the project. We also have an estimate of our schedule. Uh, as far as you know, when finally we're going to be done, and what are the steps, and when each one of those steps will be completed, so everybody understands the expectation of what we're going to do. Now we're going to work on idea generation and optimal solutions. And uh, as we said before, we're going to. I'm going through this linearly, but as time goes by. You, once you do some idea generation, maybe you want, want to go back and refine your problem definition or really look at your customer needs to make sure you understood it correctly and things like that. So it's an iterative process. Okay, so that was, that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at idea generation. What are the techniques, how people go about doing idea generation? <clears throat> so, so when we jump into the idea generation, um, so one thing you want to do is that you want to come into the idea generation prepared. It's a brainstorming process where you're trying to come up with lots of different ideas, but it's important for you to have done some research and some activity beforehand. For example, taking advantage of your network, people you know, uh, who are might be familiar with this, uh, potentially looking at the web, doing a search to see if there are any ideas relating to what you want to do already been done. So getting, uh, if you have an idea file, a lot of people who do this on a regular basis usually keep a file list of all the ideas that comes up about during the day or during the weeks or years. And then when they come to use it, they bring all that idea to, to, to solve the problem. Some people do some modeling before they get into uh, brainstorming. Um, you can search the, any patterns or anything else, doing some experiments to inform you as to what can or cannot be done, kind of uh, that kind of stuff. Looking at your competitors to see what are your competitors are doing. These are all the things that are good for you to know, have research before you jump into the brainstorm. So brainstorm is not something you walk in without having done a little bit of research before you get into it. When you get into the process, when you get into the brain brainstorming session, we want to make sure everybody feels comfortable and it, uh, to come up with new ideas because a lot of the time, the best of the ideas you come up with are the ideas that on the face of it, they might not meet or be very, uh, very uh, acceptable to people who are used to the way we solve the problem in the past. So it's important that when you get into brainstorming session, especially as a group, making sure it's a very positive and reinforcing session. In order for that to be true, what, um, what is the recommended? There's four rules of brainstorming that is really, really important for us to pay attention to. One is during the brainstorming, you cannot create, you cannot uh, um, criticize uh, the stuff. So no criticism is allowed. It's one of the kind of the golden rules of brainstorming. You could say, and you could put any idea that doesn't matter how crazy it is. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, wild idea, crazy ideas, out of box ideas, even if they sound weird, it's encouraged, not discouraged. Okay. So that's another rule. wild ideas are welcome. 
okay? And you're, you're basically, the rule is you wanna generate as many solutions as possible. You come up with as many ideas as you can in this process. And then it is okay for if somebody comes up with one idea and you, that you know, kind of triggers another idea in a different way of looking at it from your mind, it's okay. So it's okay for you to leverage other people's ideas. As a matter of fact, leveraging is encouraged. It's encouraged for you to build on other people's idea. So these are called the four rules of brainstorming or idea generation. The important part here is that what we're trying to create, we're trying to create a thing that there is no stupid ideas. Everything is welcome. Just the quantity matter. In this case, we're not trying to make a judgment on the quality of the ideas. We just want lots of ideas. And the broader and the newer the ideas, the better. Okay. So those are it. As far as um, so, so those are the rules of brainstorming to make sure you create a positive environment when people are working on it. Now, as far as preparation, they do, they, you know, they try to build a team member from a diverse group so you can get all kinds of different people involved in it. And most of the time, they like to take people out of their normal, ordinary places they live. For example, if you, you typically a good brainstorming session doesn't happen in your offices, you take people out of the offices to a new location because that forces the brain to get out of its automatic mode of doing the same thing over and over again. Just a simple act of having to find where the bathroom is in the new facility will encourage your thought process to come up with newer ideas. So typically it's encouraged to go someplace you haven't been before for this brainstorming session. Earlier in the day is better because as it goes, it's a hard work. Brainstorm is hard work and people could get tired. So earlier is better. If you have anything to help uh, capture the ideas or help uh, encourage people to have, think about new ways of thinking about it, that's very, very useful. As a matter of a lot of time, what they do is they come up with some kind of creative games to get people kind of rolling before before teams start doing brainstorming, okay? And so so there's, there's lots of things you can do in that term. As far as uh, brain the brainstorming methods available, depending on the size of your team, formality of your team, they do a lot of things. The pin card is probably the most common one. That's basically every time you have an idea, you write it on a card, put it on the table. Anybody else who sees the card can add, subtract, make comments on it. It's a very interactive process. So as you think of an idea, put it on a postcard, you put it there and there you go. That's called a pin card. Um, if the, if the, the other way would be if you had a larger group, not a very large group, but a larger group, you could give everybody a sheet of paper, a bunch of sheet of paper and have them write down all the ideas they have on a sheet, collect them all that, and then try to process them later. Anonymous method is, um, you know, if there is a reason you feel like people will not come up with their best idea, if, they, if somebody knew where they're coming from, you might come up with this method. They basically ask everybody to write their ideas, submit it somewhere, and then someone else takes those ideas and processes it. Okay. Uh, this way, the person who's giving the idea doesn't have to be identified. They can throw it in a box or something, suggestion box or something, and then you can pick it up. Panel method is interesting. If you got a larger group, any group above, I would say 30 ish or 40 ish. Anything larger than that, you really should be using this method where you select, usually is the more or less uh, people about, uh, it doesn't have to be, but a diverse group of people, let's say a sampling of, if it's a group of 50, maybe five people. And those five people get in a stage and between them, they brainstorm while the rest of the group is kind of watching. Okay, and once that happened, that those ideas are written on a flipboard, and then you give everybody time to go out there and add their ideas. So this way, you kind of put the smaller groups at the stage and organize potential ideas and brainstorming, and then the rest of the people are watching that, and then they can have their idea added because these will be put on pieces of paper hung on the wall, and people can go write their ideas on it, okay? Of course, nowadays we live in an electronic world, so there are many means of doing like similar ideas electronically over the, over the wire. So those are, those are kind of ideas for how 
to do brainstorming. Now you've done brainstorming, it's a, it's, a, it's a divergent activity. You end up with lots of ideas. Some ideas are crazy. Some ideas are fancy or whatever. So the next step is to figure out, okay, which of these really are solutions we wanna consider and we wanna move forward. And that's this section, is, its goal is to get those brainstorming ideas and see kind of try now is the time for judgment and selection. And typically we'll, our goal here is to look for better quality ideas, take the ideas that are kind of wild and uh, make them more practical uh, if you can, if not, that's fine. Uh, Sometimes you take more, one or more solution, put them together to can come up with a better solution. Um, and always got to stay positive. Just, just don't knock things down. Just always try to see if you can make a positive thing out of it. If not, just leave it alone. So the first step in the process is you got to sort your ideas into categories because you got to, when you do brainstorming, you might have five different ways, different ideas that are really the same idea or talking about the same thing. So you try to group those together. Um, and there are some other things in here how to, uh, put them in categories, and then uh, you try to um, you try to look at each category, you try to see if you can push them all together and come up with something that is maybe better, uh, uh, or, or what you could do is uh, you take each category and maybe have a group work on it, try to generate some pretty good uh, uh, good ideas out of uh, that category if there is something. Okay, and if there is some stuff that doesn't fit in a category, you can try to force fit them or to try to see if I can take pieces of these and include it in some other, some other category and make that category solution is a little bit better, okay? So once you've done this, you've got your categories, you've got some solutions kind of uh, figured out. Now what you gotta do, you gotta, you gotta establish a criteria. So what are, the, what are the measures you're gonna use to say, hey, this is good, this is bad, and that kind of stuff, and try to rank all these different solutions and then decide which one you wanna actually recommend for implementation next. So, so there's a step of coming up with a criteria, that's just basically saying if it's the cost, maybe the size uh, or whatever, whatever other measure you have on how fast the thing is going to work, um, how well is suited with the skill set we have, or whatever criteria you have, you can put it in here. And then you apply one of these ranking methods, which go from purely quick, dirty, here, majority of things, this is the right way, and let's do it, to a more involved process such as brain, you know, brainstorming and advocating and things like that. So, so I will go quickly go through these ranking ideas. So pure voting is pretty simple. We all vote. So everybody votes for, a, let's say we have 10 solutions, everybody votes for their favorite solution. And there you go. Is it up and down? Yes or no? You say, I, want, I, I think solution one is the best thing to do and you forget about the rest. Well, there's a variation on voting to add a little more value in it. So what this does is instead of uh, just saying yes or no, you give a, you say for this idea is worth one, which is means it's, it's a lousy idea. I don't want to deal with it. 10 is the best idea I've ever heard. And then you reckon in between and you can use different scheme of adding the numbers together, whichever gets the highest number or however way it works for you. This gives you a little more, the, uh, the agreement gradients gives you a little bit more, um, more uh, granularity, more ability to just don't say yes or no, but allows you to go up and give you a range of goodness. Uh, the other method is ranking. Instead of asking everybody to pick their favorite, you can ask them to give you, you know, rank the ideas from one to 10. Let's say if you have 10 ideas, one to 10, or if you have 20 ideas, one to 20, uh, it's another way. Advantage, disadvantage idea is you can create a list of things and ask people to, um, to, to weigh the plus and minuses for each one. Um, so here's an example of a criteria table, difference between the degrees. So you're trying to decide between computer science, computer engineering, electrical engineering, and you've come up with three criterias, you know, um, uh, that and you give each criteria weight. Uh, so uh, so um, 
20 times this, 50 times that, 30 times that. So for example, if you rank computer science in for criteria one as one, two, and three, this will get 20 point, this will get 40 point, this gets 60 point. And then what you do, you add them all up and whichever you get the highest score, you go to it. A variation on this is called the $100 um, decision-making. You give everybody $100 and you say, okay, here are the 10 solutions. How much of your money would you use to vote for different solution? It's just a variation. This is just a variation, basically, on the gradient agreement. It's a used dollar. So who, whichever idea gets the most amount of dollar, that's the one everybody's voting for. Advocacy method is a really, really good one where uh, you create an advocate for each one of the possible, possible solutions just to make sure everybody understands the goodness of that solution. Uh, so they, they basically advocate for that solution, try to convince everybody to go that way before voting or before making the final decision. Reverse brainstorm is kind of interesting. Instead of having somebody support an idea, you assign somebody to basically tear down an idea and criticize it, how wrong it is. I think, I think the, the advocacy and reverse brainstorming methods or reverse advocacy, I suppose, are pretty pretty good ideas to use in order for people to understand the goodness and the issues, pros and cons of any given solution before they have to make a decision. Sometimes it's not, you can't just sit in a meeting and try to figure it out, but you got to do experimentation, it's called the Gucci method, where you set up experiment to compare different solutions just to see which one is, is best for you to do that. Once you've done that, then you have a pretty good understanding of where this is, now you got to decide of all these solutions, which one do I move forward, okay? Coin toss, if, if they're all, they're all end up, all you've applied all these different methods of criteria and evaluation from the previous two, and they're pretty even as far as that's concerned, and you can't kind of decide between that, just throw the toss coins. That basically means it doesn't matter which way you go, they're pretty equivalent, so you just toss a coin and go with it. Easy way out is basically if two solutions are pretty close to each other, you look at them and you say, okay, whichever is easier to implement, whichever costs less to implement, and I'm gonna go with that. Uh, Sometimes uh, if the criteria are not giving you the answer, you might wanna refine your criteria, go back and redo the process of vending is finished to see if you can get a better answer. Consensus is you basically sit together and see if you all can agree which one is best, it's more to a concert conversation. Um, hybrid decision is you, um, uh, you know, you apply multiple methods to it, trying to figure out which one is best one. Compromise is how uh, it's not recommended. That's basically um, you make decision based on trade offs amongst the top solutions. If you've got four, or two, or three solutions, then you try to kind of compromise and see which one. Um, is, has least resistance in the organization to move forward. Typically not recommended because you usually don't end up with the best solution. You end up with the more, more popular solution, if you will, which is not necessarily what you want to do. In some cases, you don't want to make a decision. You make no decision, which means and you delay, which is a decision which you decide not to do anything. And that's a decision has implications. So you just gotta be aware just because you didn't make a decision doesn't mean the rest of the world waits for you. Things are moving forward and your no, no decision will have an implication on your organization. The other one is more intuitive. You are not able to subjectively, objectively go out there and compare things and come up with an answer, but you just go with your gut feel and you know, uh, I believe it or not, a lot of the solution in organizations happen if uh, important, really important uh, decision in the organization happen intuitively, but it's not very popular to say, I, I, I use my gut level to figure out this is the right way to go. Typically people make the decision and then create a cover for it, come up with some reason why this is the right selection and justify it that way. Uh, although intuitive uh, for people who are in the business and are familiar with the problem set and are good at what they do, sometimes intuitive solutions is a pretty good way for them to move forward. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it as far as so so you would, if you go back and take a look at this um, this thing, uh, we defined a problem, we created a bunch of ideas, and out of those ideas 
we went through and uh, created a criteria, made a selection, and recommend finally through, through the decision making process, we figured out one solution we want to move forward with. Now, at this point, you just design, I, I, we won't go through the solution implementation in, the, in this case, but once you have a solution that you've come up with, the next step is to design, to implement, to test and deliver. So uh, we won't do it in this class, but in your second year, uh, you, when you're in the last year of your associate's degree, you will do a full year project where you come up with the problem, you walk through this process, you actually implement, design it, implement it and test it and presented uh, to the broader community. As a matter of fact, on Tuesdays, last Tuesday of each month, we usually have the presentations and all of you are always welcome to come. You will get a notice that uh, when that is and you're welcome to come and join us. If you want to see some of the, some of the past projects that students have worked on, you're welcome to go to, um, I believe, you go to engrcs.com. I should have put it there. Let's see if I have it there. And then if you go to the ECS club, then there is a sample of past uh, student projects. If you want to look at what folks have worked on, the, there is a little video where they talk about people who are willing to do that. Not everybody did. No, not everybody wants to do a video, but hopefully you guys, when you get there, you will let me videotape you as example for others. So there's, there's a plan. There's about, what, 40 some? There's 46 of these there, and there are all kinds of different ideas uh, that are part of this. Of course, some of them are absolutely awesome. Actually, most of them are absolutely awesome. Anyway, hopefully you guys will be one of the awesome ones there as well. But not for this is not for this class. This would be in your last year at Clark, you would do that when you're taking the second year computer science or computer engineering or electrical engineering courses. All right, so that brings us to the end. There's no more video on creative problem solving. That was the end of it. And uh, thanks for watching.